Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. So, this is a video that I wasn't actually planning on making. It's a bit of a spare of the moment from me, but I'm sure a lot of you uh, are probably aware that we lost a great director this week, that director being William Friedkin. Um, for me, he's one of my all-time favourite directors. Um, I think for a lot of people, he's probably best known for two movies in particular, um, two classics of cinema. But for me, he's made a lot of great movies during his whole career. And yeah, I just wanted to give you a list of my top 10 favourite films from him. Some of these you may have heard of and some of them you may not have heard of. If you haven't heard of any of them, hopefully you can get some recommendations from them. Because yeah, as I said, he was a great director and he's made a lot of fantastic movies. And it's really sad to hear that he is no longer with us. But... You know, the movies will live on, and yeah, I just want to give you my top 10, so yeah, let's just get straight into it. So just before we get into the top 10, I've just got a couple of honourable mentions. So the first honourable mention is a movie called Jade, which was released in 1995, and this is kind of like an erotic thriller um, that was released around about the same time as, like, Basic Instinct and Showgirls and Disclosure and movies like that. Um, it's not a great movie, but... It does have some merit to it. It has a pretty decent story and it has an amazing cast. But I think execution wise, it's not one of Friedkin's strongest. But, you know, you may get some enjoyment out of it. But yeah, that is my first honourable mention with Jade. And then my other honourable mention is a movie called The Guardian, which was released in 1990. And this movie was seen as William Friedkin's return to the horror genre, something that he had already covered with one film that we will get into uh, later on in the list. But yeah, this movie, again, is not a great one for me, but it does have some moments. It does have some creepy imagery in places and... At times, it does feel a little bit like a folk horror, you know, sort of like The Wicker Man and The Witch. Um, so you know, there are some good elements to it. If you're a horror fan, you might get some enjoyment out of it. It's not one of my personal favourites, but yeah, it's not a bad movie. But that is The Guardian as my last honourable mention. Right, so into 10th place, and we have Bug, which was released in 2006. And this is sort of like a psychological thriller that stars Ashley Judd and Michael Shannon. Ashley Judd plays this waitress who lives in this motel in the middle of nowhere. Um, she's got a few personal problems. Um, she's lost her son. Um, she's addicted to drugs to kind of deal with the pain of, um, you know, the, the loss of her son. Um, and then not long after that, we get introduced to Michael Shannon's character. And he is a former veteran of the Gulf War. Um, he's got a few mental issues, he's got distrust in his government, he's an avid conspiracy theorist, um, but because of their respective problems, the two characters form this bond and she eventually allows him to live with her in this motel room. And the whole movie basically just takes place in this one motel room, but it kind of escalates very quickly when the characters realise that they're starting to clash with each other. And there's a lot of strange psychological elements to the story, this isn't going to be a movie for everyone, and certainly for me, I did struggle with it in places, but there was enough in there to keep me interested, so that's why it just makes it into the top 10 for me. But like I said, it's not going to be a movie for everyone, but nonetheless, that is Bug in 10th place. Right, so into 9th place now, and we have The Haunted, released in 2003, and this is a thriller that stars Benicio Del Toro, and he plays this former special ops soldier who is suffering from PTSD following the numerous missions and assassinations that he's taken part in during his career. And when the movie begins, his character basically just disappears into the wilderness and anyone he encounters in there, he just he either harms them or kills them. And Tommy Lee Jones plays his former teacher and he is brought in to, you know, go in there and extract him and stop him from, you know, causing any more harm. The movie is basically Rambo First Blood, but for me, this movie is a lot darker, a lot more violent and twisted. Um, Benicio Del Toro's character is a lot more mentally unhinged than, say, John Rambo. But yeah, it's still a pretty decent movie. Again, it's not one of William Friedkin's strongest, but it's a decent little thriller. It's only about 90 minutes long. Um, it's pretty basic, pretty simple idea, but yeah, it's um, it's a solid little movie. But yeah, that is The Haunted. 
in ninth place. Right, so into eighth place now, and we have Rampage, released in 1987. And this is a movie that stars Michael Bean, who's probably best known for being in The Terminator and Aliens and Tombstone, The Abyss. And he plays a district attorney who is seeking the death penalty for this man who has murdered this family in cold blood. Um, and yeah, it's basically sort of like a courtroom drama. I wouldn't say it concentrates that much on like the violence and the crime. It's more of like a dialogue heavy courtroom drama. Um, again, it's not one of Friedkin's strongest movies. It does feel a bit basic and a bit simple in places. I think the low budget didn't help and maybe the direction does feel a little bit flat in places. But if you're into sort of your crime dramas, there's definitely a lot to take in with this one. Uh, it poses some interesting cr questions about, you know, criminal law and the death penalty and things like that. So it's definitely a worthwhile movie to check out. Um, it's very hard to get a hold of this movie. I think the only way I could watch it was I had to rent it on Amazon Prime. So if you are thinking of watching it, I think that may be the only place to check it out. But yeah, that is Rampage in eighth place. Right, so into seventh place now, and this is where the movies definitely shift up in quality for me. But yeah, in seventh place, we have Rules of Engagement, released in 2000. And this stars Samuel L. Jackson and Tommy Lee Jones. Samuel L. Jackson plays this colonel who is brought in uh, to a court-martial because he's being accused of ordering his men to fire on demonstrators who are surrounding the American embassy in Yemen. Um, and again, it's very much a courtroom drama. It's very dialogue heavy. Most of the movie just takes place in this court martial. Um, Tommy Lee Jones plays the um, the lawyer who is hired to defend Samuel L. Jackson's character, who also happens to be an old friend of his. Um, but for me, this is a very engaging film. It's really helped by the performances from the cast. The the toing and froing in the courtroom is great. The writing is good. And overall, I think it's just a really solid movie. And yeah, it's quite underrated and doesn't really get talked about a lot for me. But yeah, I can't say much more than that. That is Rules of Engagement in seventh place. Right, so into sixth place now. And we have Killer Joe, released in 2011. And this is a fantastic thriller, um, kind of like a neo-noir film that stars Emile Hirsch. Uh, his character um, owes a lot of money to a drug dealer. And he uh, concocts this scheme to hire a hitman who will then kill his mother. And the idea is that he'll inherit um, life assurance money from his mother's death. And then he'll be able to pay off, um, you know, all of his debts that he has for these drug dealers. And he ends up going to this hitman played by Matthew McConaughey. But the problem is because he doesn't have any money up front to give to the hitman, um, he won't take the job. Um, but then he decides, Emile Hirsch's character decides, what if I... Um, offer you my little sister as kind of like collateral until I'm able to give you the money for this job, which Matthew McConaughey's character agrees to. Um, but then his character and this um, this sister character, they form like a bit of a bond and things kind of escalate from there. It's just a fantastic thriller. There's lots of twists and turns. Um, it's quite dark and quite mean-spirited and violent in places. There's a very infamous scene involving a chicken drumstick, which is just downright gross and disgusting. And it put me off chicken for a while, I can tell you that. But otherwise, it's a fantastic movie. Um, yeah, just a lot of fun from start to finish. And that is Killer Joe in sixth place. Right, so into fifth place now, and we have Cruising, released in 1980. And this is a thriller that stars Al Pacino, and he plays this cop who has to go undercover uh, in this district of New York that has a high gay population. And the reason why he has to do this is because there is a serial killer on the loose who appears to be targeting gay men, um, particularly gay men who are frequenting the local gay bars. And yeah, he just has to solve the mystery on who is committing these murders. And before he knows it, he starts to find that um, this new life he's living is starting to um, consume him and he starts to become obsessed with it. And it takes a bit of a psychological turn as the movie goes on. But nonetheless, it's still a fantastic thriller. It was highly controversial when it came out. I think a lot of gay men kind of protested to the way they were portrayed in the film, which I can totally understand. But as I said, I still think it's a 
fantastic thriller and yeah definitely one to check out as again it's very underrated but that is cruising in fifth place right so into fourth place now and we have what is most definitely william friedkin's most popular film and that is of course the exorcist released in 1973 and yeah i don't need to say too much about this movie we all know the story linda blair plays regan this young girl who is possessed by this demon and you know her family get involved uh priests get involved and all sorts of other people do to try and exercise this demon from her and yeah, when the movie came out, it was considered the scariest movie ever made. It completely shook the genre to its core. And yeah, it's a horror classic. Um, I do think personally, it maybe is a little bit dated, especially in terms of its ability to scare. Um, I don't think it really holds up in this day and age as a horror movie, but I certainly have a lot of respect for what it did to the genre. And overall, I still think it's a really, you know, solid fun, engaging movie. Um, not very scary, but, you know, a great film nonetheless. But yeah, that is The Exorcist in fourth place. Right, so into third place now, and we have what is probably William Friedkin's second best-known movie, and that is The French Connection, released in 1971. And yeah, this is just a fantastic crime thriller about narcotics officers trying to foil drug smuggling operations in New York. Um, we have Gene Hackman and Roy Scheider playing the two um, officers that were following and yeah I just love the look of this film I love how gritty it is um, how real it feels um, you literally feel like you are there like on a stakeout with um, these officers um, yeah I just love the, the sort of the look and the feel and how this movie was shot um, and it's got some great moments in it it's got great acting uh, great story Lots of great moments, some great car chase scenes, and yeah, it's just, like I said, it's just very grit gritty and has a very visceral, raw kind of feel to it, which just immerses you in it, and yeah, it's just such a great movie and an absolute classic from the 70s. But yeah, that is The French Connection in third place. Right, so into second place now, and we have To Live and Die in LA, released in 1985. And I've always seen this movie as something of a spiritual sequel to The French Connection. Again, we're following police officers, but the difference this time is that we're following them in Los Angeles as opposed to New York. And in this one, we follow um, William Peterson's character, who is on the trail of this counterfeiter, played by Willem Dafoe. Um, Willem Dafoe's character is the man responsible for murdering the partner of William Peterson's character, and he will just stop at nothing to, you know, bring him to justice. And this is just a wild ride of a movie. It's a great thriller. Um, Willem Dafoe, we all know he's best known for play playing a lot of eccentric characters, but he is off the rails in this movie. He is just absolutely crazy, um, completely steals every scene he is in. And the movie just has a great sort of glitzy feel to it, but at the same time, it still feels very gritty and grounded. Um, it's got a great story. Um, it's got a shocking ending, to say the least. And yeah, it's just an absolute blast from start to finish. And yeah, it's my second favourite movie from William Friedkin. But yeah. That is To Live and Die in L.A. Right, so we're into first place now. And not only is this one of my favourite William Friedkin films, it's one of my all-time favourite films. And that is Sorcerer, released in 1977. So at the time that this came out, uh, William Friedkin was kind of on top of the world. You know, he just released The Exorcist and, you know, he was, he was royalty in Hollywood. He could do whatever he wanted. And he chose to make this movie, but... It unfortunately had the privilege of coming out, I think, the same weekend as Star Wars, which we all know was a huge box office success. And this movie, Sorcerer, died a very, very quick death at the box office and then kind of got forgotten about. But over the years, it seems to have amassed quite a cult following, not least from myself. And yeah, I just think it is a fantastic movie. And for me, it is Friedkin's masterpiece. In the film, we follow these four men who are from different parts of the world, each of them on the run from the law, and they all find themselves in this small town in South America, and they get given the opportunity to perform this job where they have to transport nitroglycerin from one part of the country to the other. 
The only problem is that the nitroglycerin is very unstable and very dangerous, and also the route they have to take is equally as dangerous, and they have to transport the material in these trucks. But even though it is a dangerous mission, they will be rewarded if they, you know, manage to, you know, complete the mission. Um, and yeah, just from the minute the mission starts, it's just so tense, so exciting. There's some absolutely brilliant moments in it. There's a very famous sequence involving a rope bridge that is just so tense, you know, real nail-biting stuff. And yeah, I just think it's a fantastic film. Again, very gritty, very raw film. You can tell that the actors were put through their paces with this movie just, you know, because of the environment they're in, the, you know, the sort of the conditions the characters are in in this movie. It's just... Yeah, it's just it's just fantastic to watch. And yeah, I can't praise this movie enough. Um, I just absolutely love it. It's one of my all time favourites. And for me, it is the best film that William Friedkin made. So yeah, that is Sorcerer in first place. So there you go, guys. Those are my top 10 favourite William Friedkin movies. Um, let me know in the comments below if you've seen any of these movies. What would your favourite William Friedkin movies be? Uh, what do you think of him as a director? I would love to hear your thoughts. But I really hope you've enjoyed the video. And thanks again for watching, guys. And I will hopefully see you all again on the next one. So thanks, guys, and take care.